Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hey Marsha, how's it going? It's going well. Good. I'm ex- I'm excited for my trip. I leave on the 17th for Iceland. Woohoo! So I have packed, unpacked, <laughs> packed, repacked, <laughs> unpacked, packed again. Oh my gosh! <laughs> this is how it. I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this before I go on a trip. Yeah. You know, like you start agonizing over what you're going to bring. But the one thing I have settled is projects. Okay. So that's well, the that's first good. thing I settled yeah. on projects. What I'm going to take. So. All right. Speaking of projects, do you just want to jump right in or? Uh, sure. To, yeah. Let's, do we have anything else to talk about? Since usually we wait about 30 minutes before we get I to know, projects. I know. <laughs> Maybe this time we should actually just jump right into projects. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. And then if we have life okay. things to talk about, they'll just come up along the way. Yes. So do you want to start with your project? Sure. Yeah. I'm uh, okay. really close to finishing the Habitat cardigan. I've described it as the as the mysterious decreasing measurements cardigan because <laughs> <laughs> I have to go a certain amount and I measure it and I'm like a half an inch away and then I work for another hour and I measure it again and it's the same measures the same. Huh. Sometimes it even measures less. It's like, okay, Okay. I don't understand how that happened. (laughs) That makes no sense. I think it might be a case of wishful thinking. Oh, I always thought you were going to say too much wine. Oh, well, (laughs) no. (laughs) I think it might be wishful thinking measurements. Oh, okay. Knitting and crochet is stretchy. And Mm -hmm. crochet, it just eats up yarn. Mm -hmm. And I think it doesn't, like... Maybe I'm stretching it too much when I measure. I don't know. I just, it seems like there's been too many times where I've been, thought I was really close and then I wasn't. But mm-hmm. I've got one sleeve done. Um, it just has to be sewn up and attached. And then mm-hmm. I started the other sleeve. So now oh, it's just it's... a matter of whether I'm going to win at Yarn Chicken or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I will, but I'm not sure. But I'm not worried because it's a, uh, it's Lion Brand Heartland, so it doesn't have a, you know, a dye lot or anything. I shouldn't have any problem getting another skein of it in the color that I need if I do run out. So okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's one of the most exciting things is being mm-hmm. close to done with that because it's cold here, and it will be nice to have this kind of coat like. Mm-hmm. cardigan. I think I mentioned before, it's supposed to be more oversized than it is, which is probably mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not sure that it's going to be the kind of sweater that I want to wear out anywhere. It's, <laughs> you know, it's kind of baggy. It's, it's not fitted mm-hmm. at all and it's kind of baggy and shrug-like. And so the collar is big enough that I can like put it over my head like a hood. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it has a really large shawl collar, which I'm I'm actually okay. excited about, but I didn't expect that. I have to look at this pattern. What is the yarn requirements on this? It doesn't. Uh, oh wait a minute. I'm I don't looking, remember how much here. yardage. I just bought the number of skeins that it said because I'm using the exact well, same. Fifteen hundred to two thousand yards. Okay. Yeah. And it's Aran weight. Yeah. That's a lot. Of yarn. It's a lot of yarn. It's heavy. Mm-hmm. It's 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 heavy. Yeah. So I'm, well, you should see me. I'm, I'm, uh, well, it's, it's not that early, but I'm still in my pajamas, but you should see me in the morning when I first wake up, I've got, you know, my pajamas and then I've got my robe, which is just flannel. It's not, it's just one layer of flannel. So it's not very warm. And then over the top of my robe, I'm wearing a old, um, boiled wool sweater jacket thing, shirt jacket that of Aunt mm-hmm. Betty's. 
Mm-hmm. And then I've got a hat on. And then sometimes I have a shawl on over the top of that. <laughs> so this. Okay, well, how cold is it there? Well, it's been in the 40s. Oh. Yeah. In the mornings, you know, it's been in the 40s. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, it's it's Salinas cold. It's not it's not Seattle cold. And it's definitely not New England cold. Right. So, and, you know, our, our um, I think I mentioned about our heater having problems. It's now running, but it's really loud. It's on mm. its last legs. So, you know, we're, I'm trying not to run it too much. And yeah. So yeah. anyway, I'm looking forward to having this to wear in the house when I feel cold. To, to add to all the other layers? <laughs> no, <you're wearing>. to, <laughs> <laughs> no, to replace. <laughs> to replace some of them or to wear when I'm actually dressed. <laughs> but yeah, I look a I look at a, a, a site. Hmm. Yeah. And then I I'm still working on the shawl, the um crochet shawl. And I haven't done too much more with it, but I have added a couple of rows, so so that's good. And then my weaving project, you know, I talked about the warp, the problems I was having right. with the warp. And I got an email from Carolyn who um, said that winding on a, on a warping board is probably uh, making it so that I'm twisting the yarns. Mm-hmm. And I think she's right. If When I watch the video, the Jane Stafford Textiles Guild video, She's winding on a warping reel, mm-hmm. which is different, right? You like basically you the 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 warping reel spins, mm-hmm. and so you're not twisting your wrist as you're yeah. winding around. So I think that's what I was doing, and then uh, Mary Knit Admin and a few other people, Jill, um, contacted me anyway. The crowdsourcing was great because between everybody's comments, I think I figured out what I did wrong, and I was able to undo it, get it untangled, wind it back on, and it's all ready, ready to go and ready to weave. So I have, mm-hmm. I think, two dish towels that I can get out of the remaining warp, and that's pretty exciting because I at first I thought, well, maybe I'll just cut this off and, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, call it a day. But I think if I can get two more dish towels out of it, that would be good. And I'm not yeah. keeping them. Oh, <laughs> I saw your Instagram post. Yes, <laughs> my dish towel problem. <laughs> well, I can always use dish towels. I don't. I yeah, may, maybe hand, I'll hand. maybe I'll send them yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I the, and the, uh, you know, I just like making them. So yeah. But it's just funny when I when I started putting the Christmas stuff away and I saw all of the dish towels and. I think I counted, I, I said in Instagram, there were like 18 Christmas dish towels. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't including the ones that Aunt Betty had put into her laundry. Mm-hmm. So I think I probably have two dozen Christmas dish towels. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of dishes. Well, yeah. we And we do the dishes, you know, by hand. Yeah, you wash them we and wash dry them, them by hand. By yeah. hand, and we don't use paper towels. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, for... for wiping up things or for you know drying our hands or any of that so i i do use them but it's ex- it's a little on the extreme side um even for somebody who has to use a lot of dish towels but then i was noticing like how many dish towel racks do you have in your places to hang a dish towel do you have in your uh well um uh, you know right below the sink there's like a little hook okay there's one that like a hand towel that hangs there mm-hmm. and then um well, and because everyone knows I've moved into my mother's house, and that's where I'm mm-hmm. living. And so I just do it the way she did it because well, yeah, I'm afraid to change it because <laughs> she might get <laughs> Well, and you, anyway, already um, know, no. you don't have to think about where, where to put a dish towel. You already know where they go, right? <laughs> right. So the hand towel, like if you wash your hands, that's on this little hook below the sink. And then the towel for drying dishes, that hangs on the kitchen stove. Okay. So two places. So, yeah, but you have those. Um, you have two places, right? Yes. But they're, uh, but they're like those uh, little racks. Like what? They're like sticks that stick sticks out. That and there's stick like three, out, yeah. four, and they move four, and they move. Mm-hmm. You know, so so I'm not descri- so, they're like fingers, mm-hmm, kind of. Then, mm-hmm. and so you could have a lot of towels hanging up. Yeah, I have four. I have 
eight places to put a towel, and usually we have eight towels hanging. Yeah. So that's weird, too. Like, why did I need so many of that's those That's why rats? we love you, Kelly, is because you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I purposely – Aunt Betty thought they came with the house, but I actually – I actually searched for those racks. and um, Oh, I thought they came with a house, no, too. No, oh. there's one that came. There is a rack like that that came with the house, and it's in right inside the basement door. Mm-hmm. So in the bathroom, there's that door down to the basement. And when you open that door, there's a rack, and that's where we keep the, <laughs> that's where we keep the holiday-themed uh, hand towels for the bathroom. <laughs> that's where they're stored. <laughs> So that when mm-hmm. the appropriate holiday comes, you can just grab the right towel and put it on the towel holder. So anyway, when I saw <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, oh, that's a very clever thing. <laughs> and so I bought two of them. Like, mm-hmm. why? Why did I buy two so that I have eight places to hang a dish towel? But we use them all. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I always think in sets with dish towels. Yeah. Well, um, Kelly, I always buy... You know, my thing with yarn is I always buy a sweater quantity. <laughs> right. <laughs> you buy sets of eight. Yes. A sweater quantity of dish towels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so anyway, I am going to finish those two uh, woven dish towels uh, mm-hmm. soon, I think, because they should go pretty fast. And I mm-hmm. have about I have about a week left of my vacation, my uh, Christmas vacation. So. I mm-hmm. want to get a lot of stuff done during during that time. So that's yeah. um, so that's exciting that I was able to get that fixed. And thank you to everyone who commented and helped me with that uh, back to front warping challenge that I had. That that's never happened to me before because I've always warped front to back. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I know how to uh, at least mitigate it for the future. So so that's pretty good. And then I have uh, some finished objects that I don't think I talked about. Okay. I started them. Oh, maybe I did talk about them last time. Is this the uh, your nativity? Yeah, it was my Christmas cast on. Yes, because when we last recorded, you were, um, I think, knitting Mary's veil. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now the baby Jesus and his manger and Joseph Mm – are both finished. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I say finished. They don't have, none of them have faces yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I'm going to wait and do all the faces at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. And then um, I did Joseph's beard, but when I, <laughs> when I put it on him, Robert said, <laughs> it looks like he's wearing a cowl. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to do something to adjust the beard. I I took it off and I'm going to have to put it back on or maybe I'm going to remake it. It doesn't have any decreases. It's, it's really just a rectangle Mm -hmm. and on the, on the pattern booklet and the, the, you know, the box, it actually, I was surprised that it wasn't, you know, cast on two, increase to five, decrease back down to two. Um, Oh, because I thought it looked curved on the. Right. It does look curved. And so I, I, um. Oh, I'm looking at your project page. Yes, he has. Well, also his beard is the same color as his sweater. Right. His so yeah, he I, looks like well, he's wearing a vest and a matching cowl. <laughs> yes, he does. So I was like, I'm going to go look at the actual pattern because I thought it was actually head shaping. You know, no, it well, it looks like it does when you look at the picture, but the oh yes, it's well, it's sort of curved up. Yeah, Let's and see. it's like stuffed under his hat, I think, or his yeah. headdress. So. His headscarf. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to experiment with that. So I guess it's not really totally done, but but the main part of it is done. I just have to figure out how to make it look more like a beard and less like a cowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and it might and it might be that I uh, that I use a different color. Maybe he'll have mm-hmm. a darker beard than that. That might help. I hadn't thought about the fact that it looks like a matching. Sweater and cowl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, well, that's kind. Of, I, I that's kind of, that's the first thing I noticed that they're the same. So maybe if his beard was like a dark brown, the dark brown or yeah. gray or something, mm-hmm. um, and it does look like they've taken the 
like a rectangle, but when they've stitched it, they've sort of curved it up, uh, like around his chin and up under his. Yeah. Um, so I just need to do a little bit better yeah. job of that. And I, I, I do remember when I did the the Star Wars characters, mm-hmm. I had to kind of fiddle with some of the accessories to get them to look right. So mm-hmm. I'll just have to do a little bit of fiddling with that. But the kit says that it comes in with enough yarn to make those three. But mm-hmm. I actually have enough yarn left over that I think I can make like a shepherd or I think I can make a shepherd out of the one out of the yarn I have left. So that might be next that I make a shepherd um, or I could maybe make the angel. It depends on the colors. So mm-hmm. I'll look at the colors I have and decide what's the next one. But that was pretty fun. It, it was it was a, a great project for a Christmas cast on. And I don't know. You maybe don't even know this. I have, along with my collection of dish towels, I have a collection of nativities. I have quite I do know this, yes. a few nativities, whether it's a, I, a full nativity with figures or it's a an ornament that has the nativity on it. Yeah, I don't know how many, but I have quite a few. I remember having this conversation before about the nativities, and, and I'm going to say like over 20. Oh, maybe – it was a lot. I know I did them like one a day on Instagram a few years ago, I, right around in like in the month of December. So yeah, that's, I may be wrong on that, but no, it's like if you counted right. up everything, yeah, if you counted up everything that was actually a nativity scene, like mm-hmm. on the table or something, and then ornaments, it was a lot. It was in the I thought it was over twenty. Yeah, I think you're right. I I, I yeah. yeah, that sounds familiar. The funniest nativity that I had ever, the the one that I think sort of started me off on this is. When I was in catechism, I don't know, maybe in like second grade, third grade, something like that, we made a nativity. And you you know how you make a cone out of paper? Mm-hmm. And so everybody's body was a cone of construction paper. So, you know, we cut the shape, then we formed it into a cone and glued it, and and then we made the heads. The heads were marshmallows. Mm-hmm. So we, I don't know if we glued on the marshmallows. I'm not sure how we got the marshmallows on, but all the heads were marshmallows. And then the baby Jesus was a miniature marshmallow, was <laughs> the head. And our cat got under the tree and ate all the heads off. <laughs> so, and I just remember being super upset, but also thinking it was kind of funny. Um, so that's that. I think got me started, and then, and then I got the set that we had when I was a kid. My mom gave that to me and then my aunt made me one out of she would go to ceramics and and um, paint, you know, ceramic figures. So she made me a ceramic one and so over the years I've just um gotten more and more things that have that on it. So mm-hmm. this this was really it was really a fun a fun gift and a fun thing to knit. So um I may have talked about this before but um uh, um, we we actually had we again sort of like your family. We were, were not raised Catholic, but we we're not particularly religious. But my parents did have a nativity set that was. Uh, I still have it. It's um, uh, like plaster of Paris or something, mm-hmm. and it's it's uh, from Italy. And they got it actually in um, my um, my dad's brother, my uncle was a pharmacist and owned a pharmacy in Tacoma, which is south of Seattle, and for years. And they bought it at that pharmacy. They had a really nice gift shop, too, in the pharmacy, and that's where they got that. But And my mother would put it up, and we would make a the manger scene. We, um, My father would build the manger out of um, uh, Lincoln Logs. Oh, yeah. Remember yeah. Lincoln Logs? <laughs> but anyway, so I, I put it up periodically. But two years ago, uh, my cousin and her husband always come Christmas Eve, and in his family – they have a tradition now that they're all the children. There's three children, and they all they. I think the kids get gifts, but the, all the parents and the three adult children and their spouses, they don't. Their gift exchange is they have to make something. It has to be handmade, and they can't spend more than five dollars on the gift. Mm-hmm. And so he gave me every. He always brings me a gift, <coughs> one of these gifts. And I think it was two years ago he made me a bow a bow house nativity, which was just basically pieces of square wood, it's like rectangular wood <laughs> that he, in all different shapes and sizes that he labeled, you know, Jesus, uh-huh. Mary, Joseph. There was three that were exactly the same that were the wise right. men. Um, anyway, I thought that was very funny. And so he said, you know, he, he said it cost hardly anything because just scraps of wood. Right. That he And he took a magic marker and labeled them. 
And so he said, you can just, you don't have to keep it. You could throw it away. And so uh, we were laughing about it this year that um, uh, I used it as fire starter. <laughs> oh my God. Kindling. <laughs> <laughs> and burned up the nativity. Oh dear! Um, it was very funny though. Oh, well, well, while it lasted, it was funny, but That's I a couldn't keep it. Clever so. idea. I should have sent it to you to add to your collection. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Anyway, well, I have. It's gone now. I have the one from my childhood. Um, one of the one of the wise men is missing. Mm. He got lost somewhere on the way <laughs> to the manger, and then the shepherd only has one leg. One of his legs has broken off. Yeah, so he's a one-legged yeah. shepherd. But yeah, no, it's it, it's um, I don't know. It's been fun. I well, like I them. know that the 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 nativity scene that my mother had. That there's sheep, these little plaster mm-hmm. sheep, and some of them only have three legs. So a lot of times they have to lay down. They just sleep <laughs> through the whole. <laughs> They start sleeping. Yes. Well, and I have very ritualistic <laughs> behaviors about how I set them up every year, like who has to go <laughs> where. <laughs> and my niece, my grandniece, when she was here for the um, uh, for the gingerbread houses, uh, you know, she went off to play for a little bit, and then she comes back, and and after she left, I was in the in the living room, and I noticed that that all the nativities had been rearranged. <laughs> mm-hmm. All the pieces had been put in different places. So so she mm-hmm. maybe has inherited my my need to uh, <laughs> play dolls with the nativity. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that project is uh, going, I'm going to keep going on it, but the piece, individual pieces, the three pieces are done. I have one more project, Marsha, before I let you talk about yours. Mm-hmm. You're going to laugh about this. Um. The Never Have I Ever socks. Oh, right, yeah. That I have the sock blank, the double sock mm-hmm. blank. I was going to rip mm-hmm. it out, and I was going to bring the sock blank to knockers. I mean, I was very mm-hmm. firm about that, right? We had a a conversation about it, and you were trying to get yes. me to figure out what else to do with it. And I was like, nope, it's going. Well, mm-hmm. when I— You changed your mind, Yes, huh? and I'm actually remake, remaking the socks as— long socks that go up like to my knee knee socks so i'm making ribbed knee socks oh. um mm-hmm. and you know i'm doing them separately they're not two at a time okay i had given that up a long time ago um but i do i am making them i am making them in parallel i have enough sock needles that i have two sets of sock needles so i work on one and then i work on the other and i work on one and i work oh, on the okay other. so they're going to have the same decreases because mm-hmm. I started with 80 stitches so that it can go for the the largest part of my calf. And I use size zero needles. So 80 stitches, um, and then I'm decreasing as I go down. And it's a two-by-two two rib. Mm-hmm. And I've already transitioned from the purple into the sort of purpley orange color. Okay. red Kind of a red-orange color. And, and then it'll go from there into a really a light pale yellow orange by the time I get to the toe. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of excited about that. It's a nice take along project to have mm-hmm. because it's just two by two rib, which I like doing. I don't mind. I, I actually really like knitting two by two ribs. So, so anyway, that project, I actually, I was planning to nix it. And once I had ripped out the socks, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to start them again. So it's a fix, not a nix. Mm-hmm. Well, my projects is, is, and I have to laugh because of the cliffhanger uh, (laughs) (laughs) two episodes ago, but I did finish the shared rib by Ann Hansen, and I did rip it out and uh, re-knit it with the smaller, the correct needles, the smaller and correct needles. And I have to say, I love that cowl. I would recommend it. It's, it's, um, uh, it's designed, you know, because it's so long, you can just kind of scrunch it up or you can fold it over, but it looks nice on, there's really no, yeah. I mean, technically, there's a right side right. and a wrong side, but it looks good on both sides. Right. And um, you don't normally think of cable things looking that way, but the kind of right. cabling or ribs, I guess it is. It's mm-hmm. nice. And the yarn is Old Maiden Ant fingering, and it's very soft. It's really nice. I, I don't think I have anything as nice. Well, I have many, many nice shawls, but this one is very, very nice because it's up close around my mm-hmm. neck. It's nice. I really like it. Well, that's good. It's a pretty color. Um, I know the color's beautiful. That red is really nice. Um, and then um, Daphne's skull. 
<laughs> to laugh. I'm going to have to stop talking about Daphne's skull and because done nothing with Daphne's skull. I, the other day I thought, oh, I'm going to pick this. Oh, we went down to the beach New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went down to Seabrook for three nights. And I thought, I'm going to bring Daphne's skull. And I, I put it in the car and I thought, there's no way I'm going to be working on the skull. Yeah. I just knew it. Like, I, it has to be like the right time. And there's just too much yeah. going on in my head kind of to mm-hmm. getting ready for the trip. And Well, and I can I can say I don't think you'll be done with it by stitches. I don't think I am either because as I was making the show notes, I thought, well, if I get it all um, – um, knit then maybe what i could do is bring it to your house and use your washing machine and we could felt it mm-hmm. down there but i don't think that's going to happen no. either so sorry nitty barb <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's going to be there <laughs> oh, maybe you can maybe you can finish it for knockers yeah 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 now maybe I'll, that'll be a better goal that's a, a little anyway. bit more reasonable with, with reasonable yeah anything. so um and i think part of the reason i just it is um I think it was difficult for me to work on it just because of the holidays, all that was going on. Mm -hmm. And it is so fiddly and I need something, you know, when your brain is really busy and you have a lot of things you're thinking about, I think my knitting has to be really simple. And I actually pulled out the wheel, my spinning wheel and just was spinning Mm -hmm. for a while. You want something soothing. Right. And spinning is 100% soothing for me because you don't even have to think, you don't have to count any stitches or anything. You just, you know, but anyway, um, but what my some my time was really spent just trying to figure out what projects I want to take on my trip mm-hmm. to Iceland. And so I always of course always bring socks with me. So I'm gonna bring the socks that I've been working on, the John O'Groat socks. Uh-huh. I'm calling them were just my vanilla socks with the um I'm using the yarn um from yarns from the plane. Mm-hmm. It's a fingering weight in kind of a bright greens and aquas. And um, I finished the first sock, and I've knit about two inches on the second sock. So I'm planning on bringing that with me. Um, and I thought about bringing another, some more sock yarn, but I think honestly, um, I have enough things. I, I didn't really want it. I don't really want to buy more sock weight yarn yeah. in Iceland because I have so much. But I think I'd rather do that than pack yarn that I may not use. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and you have so a class. I mean, you're taking a class, so you're going to be wor- having things right. to work on. As right. part of your class, too. Yeah, yeah. And so, and one of the things we're going to do is um, there's going to be a technique to make a sweater. Um, let me see how it, it's like a recipe for a sweater. Mm-hmm. So you can make a, a, a sweater out of any, it'll be the formula, any weight, yarn, any size. So. Um, Perfect for all your yeah. sweater quantities. <laughs> yes, I know. But we have to work on it there. So it means I have to buy something there. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, but anyway, I, uh, so I'm going to bring my sock and then I'm going to, I cast on a sweater, which I'm going to bring with me and it's called seven sisters and it's by Sarah Pope. Oh, I haven't and seen I'm this u- one. This wasn't the one you were talking about. No, this is a different one. Oh, okay. Okay. And, um, oh, I see. And it's, yeah. And so it's a, it's bottom up and then, and then you'll, um, then you'll knit, I'll knit the sleeves. And then attach that. And then the yoke has, it's not color work. It's just all one color, but it has stars, seven stars that go, or they look sort of like snowflakes kind of that go around the yoke. Okay. Are you looking at I'm, it? I'm getting there. Keep talking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, anyway, the yarn I'm using is the um, yarn that I bought, I think the first time I participated in the 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 local yarn crawl here in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah. Anyway, it's, um, so it's old. Uh, anyway, uh, but it, I'm happy because I'm using something from my stash. Anyway, it's Dovestone Ba Ram U. Mm-hmm. And it's a DK. And um, that's a nice so sweater. My notes. I, know, I love the pretty? yoke detail. Mm-hmm. It's so dainty looking. Mm-hmm. But the sweater is just a nice, plain kind of workhorse. Yeah. And I think it'll be really good for the trip because it's just good airplane knitting. Yeah. And then as I call it, talking knitting. Yeah. Um, Cause it's just basically all stockinette. Um, or drinking knitting. T- drinking knitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's we, nice. We have, we have such a reputation. Kelly. I know really. Um, did you see there was a comment in, in the, Two knitlet chicks, and you probably didn't even see it. Um, Mary was saying how she was she was 
uh, reading some series. Uh, I don't even now remember what the name of it, but some mystery series, The Drams or something Mm -hmm. that was in Scotland that set in Scotland that was inspired by you. And your, oh, your really? trip to Scotland. and <laughs> Yeah. So she was talking about something she was reading. I thought, oh, that's funny. Well, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm going to tell you a story, which I'm slightly embarrassed about the story because it makes it sound like we're such major drinkers and alcoholics or something, but um, <laughs> I will tell it anyway. So the trip to Iceland, someone said that, um, oh, it's in the the notes the, from the, the guides who are taking us on the trip that alcohol is very expensive. And so they actually suggest that you buy alcohol at the duty-free shop. Uh-huh. And we had this whole discussion. It's like, well, but which duty-free shop? I mean, you can't buy it at the duty-free, duty-free shop in Iceland because you're staying in Iceland. So it means you'd have to buy it at the duty-free shop in Seattle, right? And take it to... <laughs> And it's like, and we were like, we don't want to deal with it. And then Kim's like, well, we'll just go to the liquor store before we go and we'll get, and I was like, I don't want to put a a glass bottle of alcohol in my suitcase. I don't want to do that. So we're having this whole discussion. And then um, she was looking around, you know, the internet revealed there's a a gin distillery within five minutes of our hotel. Oh, fun. So then she said, we don't need to bring anything. There's a (laughs) distillery there. (laughs) <laughs> but oh, it does cute. like oh my god it makes it sound like we're such alcoholics you know <laughs> it's uh, terrible you're just seeing the local sites i know i know you, to, you know so uh you have to see yeah. the local anyway. things yeah <laughs> oh my gosh anyway but back to my that's project. a nice sweater yeah i think it, yeah um and i really like the yarn too it's it's um really nice to knit with this uh dove stone um Ba Ram U. Um, and I don't know if they still make it or not. I'm not sure. I, I've yeah, noticed I a couple of yarn shots. Said, they've had it in the sale bin. Yeah, so I think I you know. said I, at the last episode that you thought it might be discontinued. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say that till I actually find out for sure. But anyway. So, and then I haven't cast on yet, but I'm going to bring, uh, I'm going to cast on a shawl to take with me also. And Kelly, you and I, um, just to let listeners know, we actually had a discussion about this. And I'm going to use um, the raucous rambolet fingering from our shop and i'm um and it's three colors uh falling leaves which is like a multicolored yarn and then it has bits of um and you dyed this and it's beautiful it then has i'm going to do a semi-solid rust and aquamarine with the and it has those colors in the multicolor yeah i think those Am will I be describing that together the right yeah yeah anyway the pattern i'm going to make is called dusk into twilight by Rosemary Hill. And um, so I am i haven't cast on yet, but I'm excited about that. Um, well, and I, I put the yarn in the mail. Oh, I wasn't going to tell that part, Kelly, but we'll tell that part. <laughs> well, yeah. So so Marsha so, and I are having this long conversation about yeah. the, the shawls that she had selected. And mm-hmm. we're looking at them and I'm telling her which ones I think would make the most sense and so she she looks at this one and and we're thinking of a two color shawl because she had the two colors yes when we were at the meetup in seabrook you had had given me those two skeins Mm -hmm, because marsha wanted to make a shawl out of the locust rambouillet the fingering weight so yeah um she gets the pattern (laughs) i sit there i say i'm buying it right now and i buy it Uh, and then it's uh as i'm reading it we yes (laughs) Okay, well, so then I I said, well, I think there's another color that will work really well for this. So mm. I've I've sent it to you. Um, yeah. I didn't send it as soon as I thought I would, but you should be getting it. I think Saturday. I think is when the okay the well, and I it? may give you a call too to um, have another discussion just about the placement of the colors. Yeah. Okay. You know, we'll talk about that yeah, too. Which one should go uh, there? Because yeah, once you have um, them all, you can yeah. you can see a little bit better. Yeah, but yeah, that's a nice shawl. It has stripes, and then a nice uh, lacy border on the edge. It's a nice big mm-hmm. shawl, yeah. twelve hundred yards yeah. if you make the biggest size. Yeah, so that'll be great. And I'm, I wound the two skeins that you gave me. I they're each about five hundred yards, mm-hmm. and so I wound those into cakes. And I'm looking at those cakes, and I'm kind of thinking, you had suggested this, Kelly, and I think I may do it, is break them in half. Yeah. I'll rewind them and break them in half because I, between a sweater, socks, yeah, the projects they're going to give us, mm-hmm. I'm not going to knit uh, 
well, that's 1,500 yards, yeah. right? I'm not going to knit that. So no. I think I'm going to break them in you half. You probably won't um, even knit care. the 750 yards, the half of it. No. But at, least, no. but at least it will be a little bit smaller to carry around. Yeah. 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 So I think I'm going to do that. I think that's um, a really good idea. Because it'll, then... it'll, it'll spit splice really easily. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you'll have mm-hmm. extra ends to weave in or anything. Yeah. Um, but then what I wanted, then I did cast on another sweater. And um, Kelly and I had another discussion about this sweater too. I was just in the mood to cast on sweaters. And I had other yarn that had been in my stash for a really long time. And it's Columbia from Imperial Yarns. And I like that company. That's the the company that's based in Eastern Oregon, and it's all Mm -hmm. um, U.S. grown and processed um, yarn, so wool and yarn. Um, So I was looking for a pattern, and um, I had cast on for another pattern. Uh, It was called um, Plum Island. Um, And I've forgotten now, Kelly, I shouldn't be saying that. I've forgotten the name of the – it's called Plum Island Pullover, and author is Allison Green. And I really like the pullover. It's like, it looks like a Gansey mm-hmm. kind of, but on further discussion, we decided to change the pattern. I think that the, the, it's a woolen spun yarn and it, um, I think that the, the stitch, it's just the patterning is, um, um, pearl stitches and I'm concerned it's not going to show yeah. up. I'm going to go to all the work putting in those, that patterning and it's not really going to be seen with this woolen spun, especially yeah. with my sample. You won't the get it, the it full, was yeah, you won't get the full effect. I don't think either. Yeah. So I, I have to update my project page. I haven't done it yet, but I'm, I'm just going to switch patterns and I bought the pattern and I've cast on, I'm actually working on it right now as we're talking. It's um, called Isle Oh, I guess Isle of Hote pullover by Beatrice Perron. Dahlen, D-A-H-L-E-N. And it's um, a different sweater for me because this this wool is Aran weight, which I don't typically knit things with Aran weight. Um, and it's um, a pullover, but it actually has a, a collar on it, like a stand-up collar. Yeah, um, kind of like a turtleneck, a, but it doesn't fold over, like a funnel neck kind of. A funnel neck, yeah. And what I like about it is not really tight either. That's mm-hmm. what I liked. It. And the, the other pattern I was looking at, <clears throat> the Plum Island, also had kind of like a stand-up collar. But uh, both of them, they're not really tight, so it's not going to be like a turtleneck yeah. where it's tight, you know. Um, and I don't normally – I've not knit anything with a collar like that. So I think this will be kind of a fun project yeah. to do this. And this one doesn't and have it, very many – people haven't knit it. Only 11 mm-hmm. projects so far. Yeah. And some of the people didn't do the collar. I think you should. I, yeah, I like I, that collar. I'm planning on doing the collar because I think this – I think it will be fine with this wool. Um, yeah. and if I really hate it, I'll take it off right? because it's, it's a bottom up sweater, mm-hmm. the same thing, bottom up, uh, attach the arms and then it's a uh, raglan shaping for the sleeves and the yoke. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make it. And it's interesting as I've been sitting here knitting with this yarn, I don't remember, I, this, I'm sure this was the same thing when I did my swatch, but I think they must put a lot of oil on the wool as they spin it. Oh, mm-hmm. or, or maybe it's the natural lanolin that's in it, but I doubt that it's so processed, but it, it's, my hands are kind of, um, co- there's a, I can feel something on my fingers oh, yeah. from knitting. Yeah. So I think it's, it could be a lot, you know, when people, when mills Spinning, spin yarn, yeah. they, they put oil on it, um, to get it through the machine. So it'll be interesting. I, my swatch doesn't feel that way. So it'll, I'm sure it'll, you know, it'll wash it right, out. Right. But it's interesting just knitting with it. Um, but, it, but the other thing I just wanted to comment, we had a, Kelly and I actually FaceTimed about my swatch and which sweater <laughs> to make. Um, but it's really interesting in, in that I found both of these sweaters by lo- searching for projects made with Columbia. And these two sweaters are ones that popped up that they were actually the suggested yarn from the pattern maker. I, I think that the one I'm making now, this Isle of Hope pullover is actually made with the uh, um, mm-hmm. Columbia, but we weren't sure about Plum Island, um, because the the gate I had some difficulty with the gauge, and it didn't really look like the yarn in the picture. Right? Yeah, we it now doesn't... think it probably is, but it was very confusing. And we had this conversation of when they when a pattern says the recommended yarn, um, did the pattern design in in 
and it maybe it's probably is different from each case, but did the pattern designer actually use that yarn to, to design to create that pattern? Mm-hmm. Or did they create a pattern that say mm-hmm. called for, in this case, Aaron weight, and then they just selected an Aaron weight right. that they said should be used for that pattern? And, or did they actually do the test knit in that yarn? Right. And also the pictures, this is the thing mm-hmm. that I think is kind of interesting. Um, the pictures are made with one of the samples of the sweater, Mm -hmm. but are the pictures that are on the pattern page necessarily the sample that was knit with that skein of yarn? So maybe there were four or five test knitters, and some of them used that Columbia yarn and some of them didn't, and did the 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 sweater that ends up in the pictures this in this case it was pictures in a magazine did the sweater that ended up in the pictures of the magazine was that sweater really knit out of that yarn i I would think so if the magazine is saying that it's Mm -hmm. made out of that yarn because you know the the company would have to have that colorway they would want to be expecting that a lot of people Mm -hmm. would want to be making that when the pattern comes out Uh, but in a regular pattern page on ravelry you know, it might be that the pictures that the pattern designer chooses to put on that on that page aren't necessarily ones that use the recommended the recommended yarn. Yeah, it was yeah. it was interesting because the 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 yarns are the same, the gauges are exactly the same. One of the patterns called for size nine needles, and mm-hmm. the other pattern called for size eight needles. Mm-hmm. But the sweater, the picture of the sweater that was on the pattern page with the size nine needles, the the fabric looked really stiff compared yeah. to the pictures of the sweater Marsha's actually making mm-hmm. where the fabric looks really drapey. So it, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, it makes me wonder. It, well, it's a question we can put out to listeners. If listeners have thoughts about that. yeah. Let us know yeah. if, if they if if you're a test knitter or a pattern maker. What is like? Is there well? Is there a rule? There's probably no rules, but it's like what happens? How does this work? Right. You know, do you ever just design Aaron like an Aaron weight pattern, and then a, 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 a yarn company will say this is the the recommended? You know, they'll feature it on their page and they recommend their yarn, or did you actually make it with that yarn? Right. Um, interesting. Anyway, so I'm working on that now as we we speak. Um, well, good. Uh, so, Marsha, we have a couple of winners to announce. Yes. So we had our um, fix it or nix it, and that ended. Um, I kept the thread open a little ways into Jan. In fact, um, I'm just closing it today. I kept it open a little bit into January because I know some people were, um, you know, finishing things up and kind of busy over the holidays and getting things done just right at the very end. Mm-hmm. So, um, and also that gave me time. <laughs> <laughs> to finish some of my stuff and still feel like I had a deadline to meet, right? Once the deadline passes mm-hmm. and you're, you're like, oh, well, it's over. I don't need to do that. So it kind of motivated me too. We also have our quarterly, our first quarter quarterly Patreon drawing to do. So first of all, we have our fix it or nix it. And the prize here is a pattern of your choice up to $12. And so um, if you're the winner, just get in touch with me and, yeah, let me know what pattern you're interested in and I will uh, get that pattern into your library. So uh, we actually did our drawing before the episode started this morning. And the winner in our Fix It or Nix It is Sandy, Cake and Fiber. Congratulations. Yeah. Woo-hoo. So Sandy's a new member, a new group member. She just joined us during this uh, Fix It or Nix It and she did a couple of different projects. She repurposed yarn from a sweater that she had made, I think it was for her daughter that was too big. And mm-hmm. so she took that and she uh, used it to make a hat and mitts. And then she had a hat that she had made that the cables and the ribbing didn't match up the way they were supposed to. So she uh, ripped that out and fixed it. And then I think she actually took a cowl apart that she didn't wear and made it into a hat. So she did quite a few little projects, and and um, so happy to get you your pattern, Sandy. Just get get me the information about which pattern you like, and I'll 
I'll get that into your library for you. And then our next winner is our Patreon, uh, Patreon winner for our quarterly Patreon drawing. And the prize here is yarn and a little bag from Quintessential Knits. This was when Marsh and I and Janice went on a little mm -hmm. excursion this summer mm -hmm. um, to Tolt and to Quintessential Knits. And I don't know if you remember this bag, Marsha, but it, it has the logo of Quintessential Knits on it, but it also has the definition of yarn. Mm -hmm. So it has yarn mm -hmm. and like the pronunciation, noun, and then the definition is an item to which the word enough does not apply. <laughs> <laughs> they had some cute things in that shop. Um, yeah, so, and then inside of the bag is a skein of yarn. It's Intrepid Otter, which is a Northwest dyer. The colorway is just called 12, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that is, it doesn't look like it's a colorway number because this is a hand dyer, so maybe it has some kind of pop culture meaning that I don't know. Well, because you, you say it's uh, it's uh, navy with, uh, green with navy speckles. Uh-huh. So I think the 12 ref refers to the Seattle Seahawks, I think. Oh, I bet it does. I think that's what it is. Okay. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, I, I hope we haven't announced our winner, but we hope our winner is okay with the <laughs> Seahawks. <laughs> they don't hate the Seahawks. Well, yes, yes. If Yeah, if it was Aunt Betty, I think she might not even be able to use the yarn, <laughs> even if she liked the color. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so hopefully. So our winner from Patreon is Joy Lane. So congratulations, Joy Lane. I actually, I think she's from the Northwest, um, mm -hmm. but in Canada. Okay. So she maybe doesn't have any um, NFL Animosity. <laughs> <laughs> so Joy Lane, congratulations. And thank you for your support of us on Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to thank our newest patrons also. Um, we have both Natalie and Martha who have joined us on Pat Patreon. And I also wanted to thank the, pa the patrons who signed up in 2019 and supported us through 2019. And that's one of the things that you can do on Patreon. It's a subscription service, but, you know, it's easy to start your subscription and then end it when, you know, when mm -hmm. you're, the year is over or maybe you commit it, you decided you wanted to contribute, you know, $20 to us. And so you do it $5 a month for four months. And then you go in and you, you, you know, close out your subscription. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a great way to support us. And, you know, I don't want anybody to feel bad when they stop their subscription. Certainly, yeah. we appreciate we appreciate any amount that someone can support us with. And, and I understand that, you know, people have a lot of different different things that they're supporting and and mm -hmm. so you know i i always honestly this is a kind of getting off the subject but i do think that this generation i worry about them a little bit um being sort of nickeled and dimed to death by mm -hmm. subscriptions right you know so so i know that feeling of you need to control your subscriptions um, mm -hmm. But it is possible to do, you know, to go in, set up your subscription, and then easily stop it after yeah. after even yeah. one month if that's what you want to do. But thank you to all of you who supported us in 2019. Some of you are continuing and others are not, and that's great. Um, and if if you would like to support us on Patreon, the website is patreon.com forward slash to use, T-W-O-E-W-E-S. Mm -hmm. And um, you can set up a set up your your subscription at a number of different of different levels. So, and we appreciate all of that support. It's yeah. uh, it helps yeah. us to pay for s postage, so we can send mm -hmm. prizes, and it helps yeah. us pay for patterns for prizes. Mm -hmm. and, um, it helps helps us be able to keep having the kinds of community events that um, that we like to have. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So that's our giveaways. I'm mm -hmm. really I was I really liked the the fix it or nix it. I thought that was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and I I enjoy the and, well and I like the fact that it just kind of came up as an idea mm -hmm. somewhere and we were able to do it. But I also like that we have we've been doing for the last 3 years the winter we belong. Mm -hmm. And so Marsh and I were talking about that. You know, what would you like? What kind of 
alongs challenges, contests, whatever should we have in the upcoming year? Do you like the ones that are, you know, you can count on them, that we Mm -hmm. do them every year and you can plan ahead? Or do you like finding out that we're having something new and different and, and, and you can just hop in? What's your preference? Mm-hmm. So I kind of like the the ones that just come up. Um, but I also know that if something just comes up in one of the threads that I'm, you know, one of the podcasts that I'm listening to, if I haven't really planned for it, I don't join in. Right. So, so you know, I know there's pro- pros and cons to each, and I'm kind of curious. In, in fact, Marsha and I were having a little a little podcast meeting before this episode, and we were talking about it, and Marcia said, why don't we just ask our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> so we're asking people, like, so, uh, you know, do you want to have, uh, so suggestions. Do you like the idea of having an annual, uh, it's, we always have this, uh, well, like, as you said, we've had the winter weave along now for three years. Some people uh, ask to have the nod along again. I, I remember in the yeah. summer there were a few people who were like, oh, and, I can't do it this year, but I want to do it next year. And our, I think our most popular alongs have been the not along and the fix it or nix it, yeah. which were both listener ideas. Yeah. Um, so, um, so if you have ideas for alongs, um, we'd love to hear them. And then a little feedback if you want, just ones that pop up periodically or you like the idea of having an annual. I think we're probably going to keep the win- winter weave along, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we're thinking of that. But um, so we'll... Uh, there's a, will be a thread in the discussion board so you can um, mm-hmm. put your ideas in there. And then also we really liked when we had uh, uh, questions from listeners, if they had subjects they wanted us to talk about. Yeah. So that, that uh, thread is still in the, um, on the board mm-hmm. there. So go ahead. And if you have questions you'd like us to answer, we'll do our best. Um, I guess <laughs> I, how do I say this within the realm of our expertise or some yeah, things, yeah. um, you know, don't ask me anything about quantum physics, please. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're willing to do, we're willing to do research, but there's a yeah. limit to the amount of research yeah. we want to do. Yeah. Don't ask me, what is the meaning of life? Right. right? right, right. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, and if you, if you aren't on Ravelry, first of all, why not? But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But if yeah. you're not on Ravelry, you can also send us a, me- a message through Instagram, a, mm-hmm. a, a direct message on Instagram. I'm 100 Projects. Marsha is better in motion. Um, you can go to to use fiberadventures.com and there is a contact, uh, you know, there's a contact us page that you can send us a message there. You can email us to use at to use fiberadventures.com. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get in touch with us and let us know what you think about the different um, alongs. You could even send us a voice memo. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Just email us a voice memo. Oh, oh. You know, okay. if you have if you have the voice memo thing on your phone. Oh, right. You okay. Can send a voice memo, and then you could be on the podcast telling what you what you Ooh, think. Oh, yeah. So lots of ways to get in touch, um, but mm-hmm. we're interested to know uh, what. What kinds of things people people would like to see us do in the coming year? Yeah. So, all right. And speaking of events, so our winter weave along goes until March thirty first. So that's still going along. Mm-hmm. And then Stitches West is coming in February. Yes. Mm-hmm. So um, it's the twentieth through the twenty third of February in the Santa Clara Convention Center. Mm-hmm. And then there's a meetup on Saturday, the 22nd. That'll be in the lobby area, lobby bar area of the Hyatt, um, which is connected to the convention center. And yeah. I think we mentioned in the last episode that Stitches is going to be moving to Sacramento in 2022. Mm-hmm. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, how yeah, something new and easier to find a place to stay, which will be nice. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. one of the that's one of the issues. So. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. But well, I mean, I know it's hard. It's hard to get a room in the mm-hmm. Hyatt. Um, it's hard to get a room, depending on what's happening at the stadium, the football stadium. Mm-hmm. It can be difficult to get a room at all if you're yeah. not, you know, on the ball. So, yeah. Or lucky, I guess. 
on the ball makes it sound like it's somebody's fault if they didn't do it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's um, that's where we're going to be in the near future. Marsh is going to be in Iceland mm-hmm. in the very near future. And then we'll yeah. talk more about our, our upcoming 2020 plans um, when you get back from Iceland. Yeah. Our next so, episode. So, yeah. Um, and I think I mentioned this before, but we are going to be sending the plan. Unless something happens, the plan is to record some dispatches and send those for you to post. Yeah, that'll be nice. People uh, people have yeah. enjoyed your Scotland, um, yeah. your Scotland dispatches, you and Kim. So, so yeah. we have a something. And I coming. think what I'll do, I don't remember if I said this last time and I didn't do it. I don't know, um, but um, I think I have the. Um, the itinerary, sort of like an overview itinerary, the the mm-hmm. the brochure, mm-hmm. you know, that I got to just that I read to decide to go on this trip. And what I'll do is I can post that, put a link to that. Oh yeah, um, in the show notes, I'll do that so people can see. Yeah, um, I I will say I'm just going to say before I even leave to go there, I know that when I send dispatches, I'm going to be pronouncing everything wrong. <laughs> um, I think I just know that, so it'll be nice to. Um, you can refer back to the um, the itinerary <laughs> to know exactly what we're talking about well, you, because you um, can do pronunciation on Google. Oh, you can okay. Put well, in the then word I'll t- and put pronounce or pronunciation. Now, yeah, whether you can actually make those sounds with your mouth or not is a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've done that a few times when I wasn't sure how to pronounce something. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it will be entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> to hear you pronounce the different Icelandic yeah. words. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else, Marcia? All right, Kelly. No, that's it. We will talk in a few weeks when I'm back. All right. Enjoy and I'll your, have a full report. Yeah, enjoy your trip. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.